Welcome back to Glenville State University Athletic Department here in another week of the Coaches Show. And our first guest today is head men's and women's track and field and cross country coach Dan Myers. Thanks for joining us this morning, Coach. Coach, thanks for having me. There you are. Another, uh, another championship event in the books up at the Mountain East this weekend up at Ogilvy Park. A uh, big shout out to the Mountain East and, uh, you know, always, you know, there's a lot of moving parts goes into putting one of those on. But uh, an historic weekend, which we'll get to, but um, we'll try to break down each one of the individual uh, races, men and women. But uh, and we're going to start right off with the history. We'll start off with the history. Uh, hadn't been anyone called up to that podium in 32 years. And, uh, you know, Natalie Barr, uh, tremendous race. If you can give us, you know, more of the specifics and, and the historical context on that with her race. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's a great thing to lead off with. And, you know, it's still kind of trying to wrap my head around it. And, um, you know, the, like the as the days have kind of went on, it's just kind of like a surreal feeling, to be honest, um, with what she's accomplished. Um, but, you know, just just kind of recapping the race a little bit, you know, going up the first starting mm -hmm. hill, not many starting lines in uh, Division One or Division Two are going to start right up a hill. Yep. Um, so I think that she played that really smart out the out the gates, you know. And like, I mean, I think you said that it was even closer to maybe like closer 40? to forty than twenty. She was, yeah, she was probably about fortieth out there at the end of that straight up. Like, yeah, yeah. And, and then the next time that they did the first big loop and they almost were to the mile mark or probably just past the mile mark um, at six minutes, she was in fourteenth. And, you know, the girls that she ran with for a majority of the race were about 30 to 40 meters ahead. Um, and then she, she battled into the top 10 and ran the hill super strong. I think the only negative of the race was, and, and she's kind of recapped it to some others as well, was just kind of her, just her concerns on the downhills, um, just with like kind of the terrain and everything. And I think that's where she kept passing on the hills and getting past, and it was just kind of a back and forth. And um, basically with 200 to go, she'd locked up, you know, an all conference spot, um, fourth through 11th were separated by 27 seconds. And then 12th place came in 50 seconds behind Natalie. So yeah. she ran very instinctive, um, with the race that she ran. And I mean, that pack truly separated themselves. And, um, looking back at, you know, some of these runners that she's raced against earlier this year, um, I think that she kind of used that as fuel to kind of put herself in the mix and 0.3 seconds away from first team all conference. But at, at the end of the day, you know, she still closed that gap and she just met up with a girl at the finish that was one of the, honestly, in my opinion, was one of the few in the field that could hold her off yeah. um, with the kick that Natalie has. And, um, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, highest, uh, MEC, uh, place for a female since the, um, uh, inauguration meet of the conference was 26 and she had uh she got 11th so that was huge for the program second freshman in the field fourth west virginian in the field um so a lot of good stuff there um and like i said <laughs> <laughs> yeah super exciting and um i'm just i'm really looking forward to one more meet with her yeah. this this for this this season and it's crazy she hasn't had a bad bad race yet and and to to be that consistent is just, I think it, it goes to the strength of her, strength of how, where she's put her body and the strength of where she's put her mental mental capabilities mm -hmm. as well, and I think that's huge. And I know it's probably, since it's been up there, I'm trying to think this is the sixth sixth race that's been up there, probably I can think of two other occasions where the course was softer. So, but with that being said, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a firm course. No. At all. And, you know, the, it had rained Friday and, you know, it wasn't fast. Uh, but some of the times, I know you noted of where she would have been in other years. Yeah, so, you know, I was just kind of going back and, and looking at things. So, and uh, it just shows how deep the women's conference is. In other year 2022, she would have been sixth with that time. 2021, she would have been fifth. 2020, she would have been fourth. 2019, she would have been seventh. 2018, she would have been seventh. And 2017, the course was notably different, especially at the start. Um, but that year, that would have been a first. Yeah. So, I mean, it just shows the the depth of the conference um, and where she's kind of been. And um, I think that, you know, kind of the first thing I said was the gap from fourth to 11th not being much. I think that kind of just showed, like, right there, just, like, 
how how deep some of those what um those uh that race was um but and you know i also made a note to you when we were kind of recapping it during the soccer game last night um was that her time would have been like i said six last year and the girl who ran that time won the conference meet this year so she's got a super bright future ahead of her um hopefully being in the top seven mix next year um and you know with with some girls graduating and and some things being mixed up i i think that um, you always said as a distance coach that, you know, the cross country can kind of, you know, tells a lot of the story, you know, because, you know, th- all those girls are going to do different events on the track yep. and to be 11th in one race that accumulates everyone from the 800 to the 10 K and her being yeah. on the shorter end of that is super exciting. Um, and, you know, some of the girls that you coach that were in the lower, uh, ran the lower uh, mileage or the low, like yeah. the lower events on the track. And then they, when they were all conference, that was just a huge thing that was like a, a yeah. confidence booster heading into the track season. And along that, those lines, not just with Natalie, I know you're looking for some eight fifteen, uh, you know, uh, efforts for her big times on the track, but what Savannah did, the way she came along, uh, of course you mentioned Sam was two and a half minutes faster <laughs> on, on the court, but also Hannah Hill and has really, uh, it's like you're at the poker table. You you got some chips to play with now with uh, placing those uh, races on the track. Absolutely. And I think Sam is 100% bought into kind of following the same training plan as Natalie heading in the track. Savannah will be bumping up. Hannah will be bumping up a little bit too. I think it's awesome when they see like, oh, well, the six the 6K on Hills is the worst it's ever get. What's two laps around the track going to be? You yeah. know, so, and I think that they know that they have natural foot speed. So if we put the strength on them, will continue the strength that we have right now that they're going to do something special. And like those girls just love training together. So to maybe have this opportunity and like, if it's not working December, January, and we can kind of pivot a little bit more towards the sprint side for Savannah and uh, Savannah and Hannah moving outdoors, we'll do that. But I think that that can make us super strong. And it's not going to hurt the four by four at the same time. Yeah. A lot of, a uh, lot of depth with that four by four. It's certainly looking like there with the women's side and, and with the men as well. Now, now the men, We'll circle to the men's race here. I know BJ was your number one uh, runner again. Uh, Isaac Slater kept coming and coming and made big jumps throughout the year on his end. Absolutely. And and that's how Isaac races. And um, I told him, like, now that we got one solid season on our belt, like, we just got to go sooner. We just got to go sooner. But it took three minutes off of where he ran last year, um, which he wasn't even, like, he didn't even know that because – Last year, it was just so far out of his brain that he never wanted to remember that again, you know? So, and then BJ was 45 seconds faster. Um, and then just a bunch of young guys in that group um, just battled the entire way. And it was pretty much the outcome we were probably expecting. Um, but it was the swing of where we thought we could, where we didn't know we could be, was a little bit more prevalent than, than I think we really realized at the end of the day. Yeah. And what about... Uh the regional that you spoke of there in two weeks. You want to take a few runners up there. Just uh, the objectives and, you know, what are you looking to accomplish, you know, at that uh, race in the individuals? So uh, we're taking Samantha Dawson, Savannah Cunningham, and obviously Natalie. And then on the guys' side, we're going to take BJ. Um, BJ will be bumping up to the 10K. Um, and if anything, I, I don't – the extra dis- – the 8 to 10 is not going to be any difference for him um, just because yeah. he's just a higher mileage guy anyways. And I think he thrives as the race kind of kind of unfolds. Um, he's just got to be more confident on a flatter course and getting out with the right people. This this week for him and, and then the ladies is, you know, this is not going to be an easy week of training by any means. Um, Mileage-wise, we'll be a little bit lower, but we're going to go a little uh, more on the intense side on Wednesday. And then next week, it's just completely just relaxed, just heading into the weekend. Um, but we're going to move fast this week in workouts, and we're just going get to the, get the gears moving. And um, I think some of the objectives are um, – so Sam's already second all-time in 6K history for us. And we want to improve that mark. And, I, and Savannah wants to be number three. And, and I, she's really close. And it's just taken a few seconds off of what she raced before. Um, and then uh, Natalie, you know, just just some things that, you know, it's not the overall goal, but it's some we, we, she wants to run with the top 25 as long as as long as we can. Yeah. And the time that she ran on the course before when we were up there at Lock Haven before, it has been all region some years, and some years it's been a little bit faster, or a good bit faster. So she wants to run with the mix that I know she can. I mean, 
you got to think if there's 10 girls ahead of her from the conference, she's just got to kind of do the same with the girls coming from the PSAC, um, which is tough because this is a deep conference, especially more to the 10 to 20 range. Um, and, you know, with where her grades are right now and where she could potentially finish, it's not out of the question for, for her to be an academic All-American, yep. which has never happened in program history. Wow, that would be tremendous. So um, there, there's some big stuff uh, headed there, but um, I'm just excited to get – get back out there on Wednesday morning and with training with them. So Yeah, it certainly sounds like if she runs you know, close to where she's been, at least, you know, that she would be well beyond that cut it's for that. top upper, it's top third of the field. Yep. 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 Top third of the entered field is, is how it was before with the U.S., uh, you know, the U.S. Track and Cross Country Coach Association and, uh, you know, the dues you pay, you know, that's mm. what goes for that. And it's, it's tremendous that uh, they really honor those young people. And Absolutely. it would be an honor to have to have her in that. But uh, we've got two weeks to get it, two weeks to get it. So I'll tell you, to, to put the wraps on this, um, you know, we're going to be talking track here in just uh, a month or two. Uh, we'll be bringing – we'll bring you back for the regional here. But obviously – what just the mindset you had a bu- saw a bunch of track athletes up there I- at Ogilvy, uh, just where they're at moving uh, moving on here. Yeah, absolutely. They they provided so much support. We almost had a hundred percent attendance with the track group up there, and I think they're just more bought in, and and it's just easier easier to get them to listen in on what our goals are for the program. And I think that we have some returners that are really locked into the development of the young girls and guys that we have on the roster. Um, not completely official yet, but we will be opening up in Youngstown on December 1st. Um, and then we, we're still kind of piecing together the, the, uh, you know, I guess the January, February schedule of things. Mm -hmm. Um, but I I think that for the first time they have a newer facility, um, kind of in place of where we've went to Marietta before we go into Muskegon, um, for some full team meets and maybe in Ashland, maybe Youngstown again, before we go back to, um, Marshall for indoor championships. And, but, Super excited to to kind of get some new elements into the program, and um, we're we're looking strong. And you know that I would say that we're in a better spot strength wise from the lifting. Accountability standpoint has been a lot better this year. Uh, so we're just we're just hoping to move things in the right direction. Yeah, I know uh, we'll be talking a lot more as we get to December first. Is uh, not far away. No, really, just <laughs> what you say. Just four weeks from the regional meet, there'll be a track meet. Yes. So. Uh, but to, uh, congratulations on, um, you know, coaching this group to, uh, to a history-making day on Saturday. And like I said, I think it's only setting the table for some really good things to move forward with the program. Really appreciate you joining us today. Coach, thanks for having me. Thank you. Welcome back to the next segment here of the Coaches Show this week. And our guest in this moment will be our head volleyball coach, Kiara Perkins. Coach, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Well, I'll tell you what, we had a, a full weekend, had a couple solid teams in, one of the, one of the you know, juggernaut teams in the country in Wheeling in mm-hmm. here Saturday, and then West Lib Friday night. Uh, you were able to get uh, grab a set from West Liberty there late, um, but just an overall take on the weekend here at the Waco Center. You know, we knew it was going to be tough competition coming into this week, so um, just really focusing on everything that we need to do on our side um, – which we definitely saw that in moments, but then um, other times we kind of just were forgetting our basics and our fundamentals. So that was the biggest part. Uh, had, um, you know, some good support here. I know Friday night uh, we were watching the the event because we were up at the cross-country uh, championships, and uh, they battled back, and it looked like, just early in that fourth set, if you could have got hung in there, you know, mm-hmm. you might have been able to push it. That one, you might have been able to pull it off in five. But just the resilience that they took to come back and grab one because, you know, yeah. West Lib was flying pretty high after rolling through that second set. Yeah, that's um, – even, like, at the beginning of the season, like, that's one thing that um, we really noticed in our team is the resilience and our ability to bounce back um, from those times where, like, Teams that get out ahead of us, but um, seems like it's graded, fading um, a little bit towards the end of the season, which is typical to see with um, the fatigue mentally and physically. But um, finding a way to still find that fight. Well, you're going up against a couple of uh, key matches this week mm-hmm. that uh, 
certainly some playoff implications for you. You're still in the spot you need to be, but you need a couple good weeks here to hold serve because you will yeah. be facing d and and Wesleyan over the next two weeks. Just about the playoff picture and your mindset going into these critical matches. You know, right now, um, like after our team talk on Saturday, right now it's what what are you playing for? I'm Their overall goal is um, like playing as a team because – as we're approaching your final weeks of the season, um, really remembering why we're here in the first place. Yeah. And, and just being being a first-year coach and coming off, you know, being an assistant with that, that Alfred program, uh, had your family here this weekend. So yes. Your mom and your <laughs> sisters. Just, just touch on what it means to have their support and them making that, not a long trip, but the trip down here to, yeah. to see uh, you and your team. Yeah. Um, well, my family's been my biggest support. Even when I was a player, they were traveling every game. <laughs> no matter how far it were, was, um, they were still making that trip. So still having that support and stuff, it helps almost put me back in that mindset of when I was playing. So um, just like the thrill of having that support here, not even just my family, but um, everybody that works here, honestly. Yeah, that was going to be my next question there was talk about, you know, how many young coaches we have, young head coaches, of course, with you and Coach Stoller, uh, you know, Coach Cottrell's in his fourth year, Coach Broadwater's in her second. Just, you know, a litany of young, talented head coaches. Just about, you know, how y'all have been able to lean on each other and uh, and kind of um, – you know, kind of talk each other through mm-hmm. various scenarios that, that invariably faces every coach, but you all being, you know, first-time head coaches yeah. about what that's been like. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd definitely say I'll be very well experienced after this season. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, just having that support, um, especially with Coach Stoller, uh, kind of going through some of the same situations, um, just having somebody to talk it out with, um, trying to help get different points of view. Um, it's the biggest thing. Yeah. Well, looking ahead, uh, as far as the playoff picture, if you talk about the the, the matches this week and what they mean as far as uh, the playoff picture. So definitely um, our match um, Tuesday with E and E is going to be our big one. Um, with them being on our side of the uh, conference, definitely. You know, we played them. Um, before but really focusing on I tell the girls I say we can't focus on how we played people in the past Mm because at any given moment like this conference is really going either way at this point um if one team is having a bad game like there can be upsets like we've seen it um a couple of times so yeah. far already. Yeah, and you all almost made a run at Charleston. I mean, we had them at a set point. <laughs> we could get that thing to two to two. And, and then they come back, and they've had some big wins over mm-hmm. the top top teams in the league. But you uh, – yeah, the, you're right. Danny, mm-hmm. I mean, we, we were able to get them here. They played us tough in stretches, and now we got to go to their place. Mm-hmm. Uh, that could really put you in a good spot. And then with Wesleyan coming, I think, at the end of next week. Yeah. Those yeah. are uh, those are the key ones that could really put you in a position to make the playoffs. Yes, yes, I definitely agree. Um, but really, just trying to focus one game at a time. I try not to let the girls get too far ahead of themselves. Um, really just focusing on the present. Yeah, I know we can't mention names, but I do know you, you, you've you been working hard as far as getting some recruits to look at us and mm-hmm. you know some activity on the portal and whatnot. What's uh, what's been the most fun about that, or your biggest challenge on really trying to paint your own picture with a roster? You know, like right now, like the biggest challenge is like my assistant. She's in the school full time mm-hmm. right now, so um, having that extra help, um, which after this semester um, will be better, and just having that extra help, um, yeah. helping with the communication and stuff. And during the season, it does get difficult with um, trying to get everything settled with um, what's going on right now, but then also preparing for the next couple of seasons. Um, that it, it does get difficult, but um, still, like, the support and stuff that I've been getting from um, the other coaches yeah. and other faculty and staff, um, 
but really like with the people that um i have been in contact with like i'm very excited for the next seasons to come yeah we're very excited and uh, again big big night tomorrow night so we're going to have a couple to talk about next week but this is uh really setting the table like i said this, yeah. this could put you in a very favorable position as far as the mm -hmm. playoffs goes and uh, which would be really really admirable from when you got the job and the mm -hmm. way it's all fallen <laughs> had a piece of uh, schedule together but but uh but tell you what we wish you best look luck tomorrow night over D and E and we will be you know catching up with you next week. <laughs> thank you so much. Hey right, thank you coach. Welcome back to the next segment of the coaches show and our guest in this segment is head soccer coach J R Dotson. Coach thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you coach. Always glad to be here. Crazy week. <laughs> crazy, week. crazy week. A couple big matches. You knew they were going to be, and what an emotional roller coaster that heart wrenching one nil defeat to state on the penalty kick uh, when I think we outshot them ten to four that night, and then coming back and and handling uh, Davis and Elkins yesterday two nil. Uh, you know, another strong effort and a pretty key win. Just you know, some takeaways if you can. Let's let's. Slice and dice at both of those uh, individual matches. Well, I think uh, against State, I think uh, and, you know State beat Concord last night. I think we 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 were proven again that we can play with the top teams in the conference. Uh, the it's unfortunate the the PK against State. Uh, it's um, it, it was heartbreaking, uh, and then having the referee apologize to the girls and to us that you know it was a missed call, but. That's part of the game, and it's part of. Uh, I tell the girls all the time in practice, I'll make a, a bad call on purpose just to tell them it's a bad referee, and you just got to overcome that. So uh, the girls will buckle down. And we, we have to take care of business. We put some of those shots away, coach, and um, and we're discussing this in a different light. But uh, happy with their effort at state. I thought they played really well. Uh, and then coming back to the D and E, we knew it was a, a big game for playoff implications. And uh, the girls stepped up in the first half. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, and I'm going to ask you a question now. What, how was your take on uh, uh, Arena, Arena playing up top? I thought she created a lot for us. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, very creative. Uh, made a lot of things happen uh, as a facilitator. Yeah, and uh, the. Uh, I feel like just the sharing of the ball, you know, there was a, because truth of the matter is that that match could have been five nil. Yeah. 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 I kept saying on the, I kept saying it uh, on the sideline. I said, coach going to be upset because he told me three nil. <laughs> and we, we, I we, did. Yeah. We, we kept pushing it. We, we kept pushing it. And, uh, and I thought we were going to get it a couple, a couple different times in that game. But uh, yeah, the, especially that first half was exciting to see the, the different creativity, especially coming out of the arena and then Smets coming on to it. A couple of times Hills made a great run and uh, even uh, yeah. Noelia had a great shot off the off the post. Uh, yeah, it was a good game. It was uh, it's exciting for it's exciting for me. And I think it's exciting for the girls. They know what's ahead. And uh, I think our challenge now, getting ready for uh, Charleston, which everyone knows is you know still undefeated in the conference. Yeah. Um, our challenge, getting ready for that and getting ready for for Concord, which I I want to win here at home, is keep them focused on those two games upcoming and not think ahead to Frostburg. Yeah, that's uh, going to be tough. Uh, but uh, again. Everybody, all the teams in the South, as we're shuffling, are have to play them. And now, by what you did yesterday, you know, D&E is going to have to win. They're going to have to beat one of those top teams, and we're going to have to lose out for them to overtake us. So we've put ourselves in a good spot, but there's still work to do. And then, yep. uh, and of course, the Charleston, who we played, you know, well with for a time in that, that first match. But Wesleyan over at their place could be the one that could seal the deal on Sunday. For sure, and the uh, Wesleyan Wesleyan's going to be a challenge as well. They're playing well, and it's different going from uh, turf. You play every game on turf, and all of a sudden you're playing on it's a different on game. Wesleyan, yeah, Wesleyan's grass, and uh, it's funny. The Wesleyan coach texted me last night, congratulate us on the win against D and E, and and he said, hey, just a just a warning, our our, our pitch isn't really good in shape right now, so it's going to be it's going to be <laughs> challenging, uh, but they. The, It'll. We'll probably go to the 
the softball field out there on the grass at some point um, Friday or Saturday and get some touches on the grass out there. Yeah, so much history over there, uh, you know, at Wesley and over on the stadium, over on the river over there uh, that you're very familiar with. Uh, how, I mean, if, if, if we could pull that off there, and that be what would put closure on the berth, uh, you know, the the, the playoff berth. Uh, how special would that be to do it there? Yeah, pretty special because I think you know the relationship that I have with uh, that Coach Holgren, who was very successful over there, and uh, you have my my wife still a professor over there. Uh, so yeah, it would be very special. It mean a lot to me. I, I, my kids grew up on that field over there practically. Uh, my daughter played over there at Wesleyan yeah. for a little bit. So, um. Yeah, it would be very special. It'd be very special to, to to do it, seal it up over there for sure. Yeah, so a lot of work to be done. Uh, just you know, to get into the weeds a little bit here, you mentioned about Irene. You know what she's doing. Uh, we had talked briefly about Brooklyn Watts being inserted in the lineup about the job she's done back there with uh, you know with Hendricks and uh, Estrada and Sonati. Uh, how she's fit in with that group. The defense has been phenomenal, and now you've had Michaela Brown in goal for two matches, and and she's performed well. Yeah, Michaela, uh, senior experience. She stepped into the role. Uh, I thought played really well yesterday, and if if it looked like she was making a mistake, she made up for it really quick. So Michaela's playing playing really really good, uh, and that's what we're going to need going against Charleston and 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 these these teams in the South are tough. So uh, and I have all the faith in the world in Michaela. I think she'll do well. Uh, Another one that I would give a shout out to uh, is Itana. Uh, if she doesn't make that freshman team, I'll be shocked. Uh, she's got I think, five goals and six assists. Now. Yeah, uh, those are better numbers than what Smets had when Smets was a freshman. Yeah, and, and we know fresh uh, Smets made it. So our our team is pretty well rounded right now. Yeah, uh, Sophia is uh, Sophia and Graylin kind of go unmentioned in the middle, and they just they work their tails off, and that's what keeps us. Keeps us in the in the mix there, and uh, just uh, defensively being able to work at the rotations you've had back here. Yeah, you know, we uh, yeah yeah yeah. Yesterday's game was really good. We were able to get the subs in in and out in the middle and and refresh. And I think we noticed that when we brought Smets Smets back on and Itana back on there towards the end. Uh, I think that was kind of sealed the deal as well that. They started struggling then to get it back across half. It makes a difference when they're fresh legged, but the touch again on that defense, uh, they are playing really well. When they're when they're focused, when those four are focused, it's gonna to be tough to score on us. And Sonati's coming out of that back. She wants to score. <laughs> and, she, she's she's drilled some thirty five yard shots, yeah. has just missed a few of them. And uh, of course we we we've seen the speed through the years here of McKenzie and you know, what she does and her skill back there is uh, she's phenomenal. But like you mentioned, Tessa wears her emotion on her sleeve. Yeah, she does. You know, yeah. she gets very emotional and uh, you know, gets a little chippy at times and she's fun to watch. She certainly is aggressive. And then uh, Estrada with her clearing, Sarah with her clearing passes out of there. Seems like she's always Johnny on the spot and I've noted how unique it is how she wears the long sleeves and covers her hands. Yeah. Uh, she she's fun to watch and she's so calm. She never gets excited. She's very calm and and I think uh, I but, think Astra doesn't want to see her again from that state game. Uh, she control she controlled she kept that ball away from Esther, which uh, I think Esther got one good shot off in that, yeah. in that game and and it was scary because that girl that that girl can fly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she did a tremendous job with her, and like you know, the one goal was a PK. I mean, Esther never got, yeah, never got that breakaway where she could come in, you know, with a, with a chip shot. Yeah, I didn't. Other than that one shot, I don't think we felt thre threatened at all that, that that game, and then that was a lot due to uh, Sarah and how she played her. Yeah, so it just calm steps, kind of the antithesis of Tessa. Who, yeah, <laughs> she's coming in hot all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, it's a lot of fun. But now you've got uh, the, uh, uh, you know, moving moving forward. Again, we talk about uh, Wesleyan on Sunday, Charleston with a couple of away matches, about being able to, to get a key win on the road. Uh, there's been a couple opportunities here that end up with draws uh, yeah. just to get over that hump and get that win on the road. Uh, uh, yeah, we need it. We, we, need, we, need to, we need to come away with a result on one of those, uh, a win, a win result. 
I think I think we're going to surprise Charleston. Uh, one of the neat things this year too is that uh, I don't think there's a team out there now that underestimates uh, Glenville State University women's soccer. So I think I think Charleston will be built up, ready to play us, and I think we'll have a game plan. And and our girls are our girls are ready for it. I think one of the key things too that's that we've been uh, knock on wood and that we've been very uh, fortunate with is we haven't had a lot of those injuries. Yeah. I, think, I mean, last year we had uh, McKenzie uh, uh, with a real bad ankle sprain, missed the last couple of games, uh, Smets with a broken collarbone. And so other than Abigail getting hurt at practice uh, with her foot, I think injury-wise we've been, we, we, we've been doing pretty well, and that's where you want to be here coming down to the end of the season. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a big week behind us and a big week ahead. And looking forward to talking next Monday. We may have some history to speak about on that day. Well, that'll be great. That'll be great. Thank you, Coach. Hey, thank you, Coach. Thanks for joining us, and thank you for being with us out there. We'll be back on the Coach's Show. Okay, welcome back for a, another segment of the Coach's Show here on this fine October 23rd. Beautiful fall day here in central West Virginia and a football victory to celebrate now the home football victory to celebrate, and here is Coach Mike Keller. Hey, uh, stay, uh, great crowd today. <laughs> yeah, a little chilly. You can tell that uh, that it's actually football weather now. Uh, I had to break off the jacket today, so yeah. be looking forward to practice later. Yeah, yeah, it's going. You know, really just hold and serve. Uh, I know you had a little adversity early, but your team rebounded and bang, you were up ten zero there, ten minutes in, and then. Uh, you know, roll from there. Talk about, uh, you know, just uh, really the the plays made in that first half to put you in that position to, to be well ahead. Yeah, we haven't uh, we haven't started fast, you know, offensively this year. Uh, we come out and we hit a screen and hit a run and and uh, have a couple really good plays early, and then we get a high low, which we went, we watched it, you know, obviously on tape since and. Um, our guard was actually going to cut off the nose, and he trips, and they call a high-low, which puts us in a long yardage situation. And uh, been really wearing, you know, Anthony Garrett out on on hitting his checkdowns and finding his backs. And, and we got a third and long, and they play a deep, too deep coverage, and he does the intelligent, you know, veteran thing and throws the check down to the back, and the nose guard tips, and it goes right to their corner and for a pick. You know, so I was like, man, even when we're doing everything right, you know, we just can't get out of our own way. Uh, but our defense stiffened and held them like they've been doing, thank God. Uh, then we got the ball back and went right down the field and, and scored to make it 7 nothing. get the ball back and same thing and make it 10 nothing. Then our guys really started just to execute and, and um, as you said, you know, making the plays. You know, truthfully, um, last Monday when we came in as a staff, I said, I want to watch all the runs, you know, as a staff and, and let's look where we're cutting them and how we're cutting them and, and you know, the running back's path to – to, you know, are we being predictable with play calling? Are we predictable with our formations? Are we not blocking it well? What's what's the case? What's going on? And we thought we found a few things. And then, uh, and then we did the same thing with all of our throws, you know, all the incompletions. And we thought we found a few things. And we really spent Monday a week ago spending more time on Glenville than we did Concord. And, yeah. uh, and um, you know, sometimes as a coach it nerves you up. And I was like, no, the best thing we could do for our team is be the best team we can be. And um, – that's what we did, and, and you saw it. I mean, you know, Concord's not where they want to be, obviously. They don't have the talent level, and we thought that going in. But uh, those games still scare you because they got a couple guys that, you know, especially on offense, that could jump out of your shoes. And and uh, But we went out and we executed, you know, all three phases and, and, and got the win as we should have. And you, I know, uh, talking about that defensive end, because I know um, – you know, after the West Liberty game, you've had a lot of personnel shuffling here in the last month. And for, you know, for those guys with the different combinations you used, two really good defensive performances in back-to-back weeks here at home. Yeah, we really got uh, we got beat up in the first half of that West Liberty game. And, um, you know, two of our top D, D linemen haven't played. Matt, you know, they have Max, Max Boyd and Josh Carr haven't played each of the two weeks. And, you know, Mark Shepard set out two weeks ago. We feel he's as good a corner as there is in this league. And, for Terry Noel didn't play this past weekend, who's an excellent player. Um, and we're changing, you know, we're changing and messing around with, with our fronts and we're stemming some different things and doing some different things in blitz game. And, yeah. um, you know, to get a, to get out of the three down, the four down to the bear looks, to, to be as multiple as we've been with really, you know, hey, uh, not really knowing who's going in there from play <laughs> to play. You know, And, I mean, yeah. we're not making any excuse, just saying that, 
you know, this time of the year, that's kind of the way, you know, teams are built. And uh, for our kids to go in and, and have the two good defensive performances against Wheeling, who's a very good running football team, and then against Concord, who's got, you know, the returning player of the year at quarterback, you know, to, to do that uh, back-to-back weeks and, and really – play well defense is a testament to the staff and and the end of the kids and all the hard work and practice structure and all those things are um you know were, were good the last couple of weeks now i don't want to pat them you know coach rod yeah. had a saying you pat them on the rear end too much you know and i can't yeah. say i'm ready to <laughs> yeah. wait, wait, but yeah. we can't you know we don't want to pat them too much but it, but they really doing a good job yeah well, well I'll, I'll hit that quickly then we'll look at pembroke because you, you you alluded to the the blitz packages and uh defensively you know t- two-part question here it, going back to the second half of the Wheeling game and then this week with Concord, you know, being able to put pressure, you know, defensively on them. Sure. And then the flip side of that, you know, second half last week and this week, you know, outside of a few plays in here, your O-line and Anthony, you know, they've been able to, to handle the pressure coming at you. Yeah, we um, we we probably are different than a lot of teams. We do a um, – it's a blitz pickup inside run period. We do it every day in camp. And then during the season, you really can't do it every day. It's it's physical, you know. And uh, but a couple of weeks ago, we added it back to practice, and, and we didn't make it as long a period as we do during camp. But we shortened it down, and you know, one place run, next place pass, and it's basically good versus good. Uh, get the blitz. How do you handle the blitz versus run? How do you handle the blitz versus pass? And then they got to fit the run v- with their blitz, and they got to mm-hmm. they got to handle the pass. And we don't have any receivers in the drill. You know, it's just it's just drop back or straight run game and. Um, I think it's helped both sides of the ball. Um, you know, really defensively, you're as good as your pressure allows you to be. You know, you yeah. got to stop the run and put pressure on the passer. I mean, that's, you know, you spend all day watching Sunday football. And it, it, I don't care if you're watching the SEC or, or Gilmer County High School or the Steelers, you stop the run and you put pressure on the passer. How you do it, I mean, you can get into that all day yeah. long. But but those are the keys to the ball game. And then offensively, you know, our play action game was really good this week. Well, it was the best we ran the ball. Yeah. You know, if you run the ball well, then your play action game's good. And then yeah. then all of a sudden when you're dropping back and throwing on first down, you're you're yeah. you're seeing all these vanilla coverages. You got and, something to sell. It, it's exactly yeah. right. It's a lot easier. It's not really uh, there's not too many it's not a really a secret or a hard yeah. formula. <laughs> it's hard to do. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, now we got the our longest road trip of the year going down south uh, to Pembroke and you know, two years ago, uh, you know, we jumped on them and it got away, the storm came. Sure. Uh, it's a tough travel. It's a tough travel. And and they again a lot a lot of skill, a lot of talent out there. And uh just, you know, what what look at what you're facing this week with uh, this five and three opponent with some good wins on the board. Well, they got to be the fastest team in the league. I mean, I can't imagine there's anyone any faster than they are. Um, Charleston's got to be up there, I would imagine. Um, obviously, Notre Dame could run. But, I mean, you're in North Carolina. You're in the South. I think we, we looked up their tuition. I mean, I was in the sack for two years, and we played them. You know, so I know a lot about them. Um, tuition's like $500 a semester. I mean, they are, and I'm not exaggerating that. They looked, looked it up this morning. It's five hundred dollars a semester. <laughs> I mean, so yeah. you're getting if you're an in-state kid, so you're getting a bunch of you know, you're 40 minutes from Myrtle Beach. Yeah. If that you're getting a bunch of speed down there. Uh, we first time I ever played UNC Pembroke was 2009 when I was head coach at Concord. I believe they were ranked in the top 10 in the country that year. Uh, 2010 we played and we went down there and beat them. And they had two defensive ends that could rush the passer that were just a nightmare. Well. Both years I was at LR, same formula. All five years been here, same formula. I mean, they, yeah. they, you know, their backup kid, their backup DN has ten sacks. I mean, oh so, so they are just uh, they rush the passer, they play man in the secondary, they do some really neat things fire zone wise. Uh, they're in and out of a three down, four down. They're a nightmare. They are a nightmare. They outgained Fairmont State two weeks ago, four hundred seventy yards rushing to seven, and those aren't exaggerated wow. numbers. I mean, so. Yeah. Uh, and then Fairmont State turns around and beats Charleston this week. So it's not like they put, beat a bad team, you know, when they did that to Fairmont. Um, now, there were some sacks, obviously, and all that. And then offensively, I mean, y- you know, they they are very creative. They got a running quarterback who could throw it a little bit. Um, every game I watch them, they, they hit some sort of different, not really a trick play, but something creative, you know, post-post will. They get in these unbalanced formations, all these wacky motions and um, – that they are going to be, you know, but again, if we go down and try to figure out Pembroke, we're going to be in trouble. You know, what we got to worry about is us executing at a high level, you know, and and then traveling the right way and having a good week of prep. If we do that, then you've always got a chance. If you don't do that, you have no chance. It doesn't matter who you're playing or what you're doing. 
Yeah, and I know you'll be heading down there this weekend. And, uh, again, a unique start time. I know we worked mm-hmm. it out there with Coach Christie uh, and the different festivities they have going on down there with a 3 o'clock start. Sure. And uh, But it really worked out well for us, I believe, and with the itinerary. So, uh, uh, you know, I don't know it's how the game goes, obviously. But, sure. Uh, well, they're having a – their coach hit me up. They want to wear all white. They're having a white out. If you, I mean, you, this just shows you what people think at Glenville. Like, like we're, 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 we're state's homecoming. They want to place at night. Pembroke, you know. Yeah. And they got these festivities. They look at their schedule and say, well, who could we do to have a good game? And they pick us, you know. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. you know, we just – we got to be – we got to look at that and uh, – and try to prepare a certain way and, and not let any of that stuff get in our heads or in our way. You know, we just got to go – we got to block and tackle and throw and catch. That's what we got to do. Yeah, we uh, – you know, you and I have talked about it. The brief time that they were in our – in the Mountain East Track Championships have a tremendous team and a large volume of their spinners and jumpers were football players. And you look out and all these kids are 6'2 and they can all run. <laughs> oh, that Dixon kid three, he been in his – I swear, we, I think I played against him when I coached at LR. I mean, he's yeah. been there forever and he – he could fly, and I'm not sure he's their fastest guy. I mean, they just like you said. You look at their you look at their track team, and all those kids are football players, and, and yeah. uh, they could they could run. You know, and we, you said it. We, we two years ago we went down there, we were up fourteen nothing, and up the, the storm hit, and we didn't play worth crap after that, and and they ended up beating us. You know, and then last year we jumped on them and got on them and and beat them, and I mean I don't know what happened there, but I mean you watch them now, and I mean they are just a. Uh, they're leaving the league, and I'm glad <laughs> yeah. they're a fast football yeah. team. Well, hopefully we can, you know, have a have a good uh, a good final trip down there to to Pembroke. Or we we may play them again someday in the crossover, but right. you know, with this uh, uh, again, but it's a big game. It's a big game all around. To be four and three, this could certainly uh, you know lay the groundwork for the you know rest going into November for us. Sure, we and we want to, you know, we got three games left. Um, you know, we we want to uh, we want a couple in a row here. Um, you know, we would like to get some momentum going, and and you know, it's just so weird for me as a coach. Like you're just, you worry about your product that you're putting on the field, and and you feel like if you do that, then the wins and losses come. And um, you know, I think I've told you all season, we got a good football team. You know, we're up and down. We don't always do everything exactly the way I would like. Uh, I'm sure if you didn't read every coach in this league, they'd probably just say the same thing about their team. Um, it's just, you know, we got to go down and we got to execute. We don't have to play perfect. We certainly don't, but we do need to go down and, and play well to beat a team like this. No. Well, Coach, we're really looking forward to the trip. Again, to everyone out there, it's a, uh, you know, unique start time for, for the Mountain East. be 3 p.m. down at Pembroke, and you'll be able to get catch uh, Mountain East digital television with the broadcast, and uh, we'll have you linked up. So, Coach, thank you for joining us here today. We'll be getting together again next week. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.